Tutorial 8 Flight Manuals and Documents This lesson covers Airplane Flight Manuals, AFM, the Pilot's Operating Handbook, POH, and aircraft documents pertaining to ownership, airworthiness, maintenance, and operations with inoperative equipment. Knowledge of these required documents and manuals is essential for a pilot to conduct a safe flight. Airplane Flight Manuals, AFM. Flight manuals and operating handbooks are concise reference books that provide specific information about a particular aircraft or subject. They contain basic facts, information, and or instructions for the pilot about the operation of an aircraft, flying techniques, etc., and are intended to be kept at hand for ready reference. The Aircraft Owner Information Manual is a document developed by the manufacturer and contains general information about the make and model of aircraft. The manual is not approved by the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, and is not specific to an individual aircraft. The manual provides general information about the operation of an aircraft, is not kept current, and cannot be substituted for the AFM POH. An AFM is a document developed by the manufacturer and approved by the FAA. This book contains the information and instructions required to operate an aircraft safely. A pilot must comply with this information, which is specific to a particular make and model aircraft, usually by serial number. An AFM contains the operating procedures and limitations of that aircraft. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 91, requires that pilots comply with the operating limitations specified in the approved flight manuals, markings, and placards. The POH is a document developed by the aircraft manufacturer and contains FAA-approved AFM information. If POH is used in the main title, a statement must be included on the title page indicating that sections of the document are FAA-approved as the AFM. The typical AFM POH contains the following nine sections, general, limitations, emergency procedures, normal procedures, performance, weight and balance equipment list, systems description, handling, service and maintenance, and supplements. Manufacturers also have the option of including additional sections, such as one on safety and operational tips, or an alphabetical index at the end of the POH. While the AFM POH may appear similar for the same make and model of aircraft, each manual is unique and contains specific information about a particular aircraft, such as the equipment installed and weight and balance information. Manufacturers are required to include the serial number and registration on the title page to identify the aircraft to which the manual belongs. If a manual does not indicate a specific aircraft registration and serial number, it is limited to general study purposes only. Most manufacturers include a table of contents, which identifies the order of the entire manual by section number and title. Usually, each section also contains a table of contents for that section. Page numbers reflect the section and page within that section. 1-1, 1-2, 2-1, 3-1, etc. If the manual is published in loose-leaf form, each section is usually marked with a divider tab indicating the section number or title, or both. The Emergency Procedures section may have a red tab for quick identification and reference. Section 1. The general section provides the basic descriptive information on the airframe and power plant. Included are such items as wingspan, maximum height, overall length, wheelbase length, main landing gear track width, diameter of the rotor system, maximum propeller diameter, propeller ground clearance, minimum turning radius, and wing area. This section serves as a quick reference and helps a pilot become familiar with the aircraft. Section 2. The Limitations section contains only those limitations required by regulation or that are necessary for the safe operation of the aircraft, power plant, systems, and equipment. It includes operating limitations, instrument markings, color coding, and basic placards.
Some of the limitation areas are airspeed, power plant, weight and loading distribution, and flight. Airspeed limitations are shown on the airspeed indicator, ASI, by color coding and on placards or graphs in the aircraft. A red line on the ASI shows the airspeed limit beyond which structural damage could occur. This is called the never exceed speed, VNE. A yellow arc indicates the speed range between maximum structural cruising speed, VNO, and VNE. Operation of an aircraft in the yellow airspeed arc is for smooth air only, and then only with caution. A green arc depicts the normal operating speed range, with the upper end at VNO and the lower end at stalling speed at maximum weight with the landing gear and flaps retracted, or VS1. For airplanes, the flap operating range is depicted by the white arc, with the upper end at the maximum flap extended speed, VFE, and the lower end at the stalling speed with the landing gear and flaps in the landing configuration, VSO. The power plant limitations portion describes operating limitations on an aircraft's reciprocating or turbine engines. These include limitations for takeoff power, maximum continuous power, and maximum normal operating power which is the maximum power the engine can produce without any restrictions and is depicted by a green arc. Other items that can be included in this area are the minimum and maximum oil and fuel pressures, oil and fuel grades, and propeller operating limits. All reciprocating engine-powered aircraft must have a revolutions per minute RPM indicator for each engine. Aircraft equipped with a constant speed propeller or rotor system use a manifold pressure gauge to monitor power output and a tachometer to monitor propeller or rotor speed. Both instruments depict the maximum operating limit with a red radial line and the normal operating range with a green arc. Some instruments may have a yellow arc to indicate a caution area. Placards most aircraft display one or more placards that contain information having a direct bearing on the safe operation of the aircraft. These placards are located in conspicuous places and are reproduced in the limitations section or as directed by an airworthiness directive. Section 3. Checklists describing the recommended procedures and airspeeds for coping with various types of emergencies or critical situations are located in the Emergency Procedures section. Some of the emergencies covered include engine failure, fire, and system failure. The procedures for in-flight engine restarting and ditching may also be included. To be prepared for emergency situations, memorize the immediate action items and, after completion, refer to the appropriate checklist. Section 4. This section begins with a list of the airspeeds for normal operations. The next area consists of several checklists that may include pre-flight inspection, before starting procedures, starting engine, before taxiing, taxiing, before takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, before landing, bulk landing, after landing, and post-flight procedures. To avoid missing important steps, always use the appropriate checklists when available. Consistent adherence to approved checklists is a sign of a disciplined and competent pilot. Section 5. The performance section contains all the information required by the aircraft certification regulations and any additional performance information the manufacturer deems important to pilot ability to safely operate the aircraft. Performance charts, tables, and graphs vary in style, but all contain the same basic information. Examples of the performance information found in most flight manuals include a graph or table for converting calibrated airspeed to true airspeed, stall speeds in various configurations, and data for determining takeoff and climb performance, cruise performance, and landing performance. Section 6 the Weight and Balance Equipment List section contains all the information required by the FAA to calculate the weight and balance of an aircraft. Section 7. This section describes the aircraft systems 
in a manner appropriate to the pilot most likely to operate the aircraft. For example, a manufacturer might assume an experienced pilot will be reading the information for an advanced aircraft. Section 8, the Handling, Service and Maintenance section, describes the maintenance and inspections recommended by the manufacturer and the regulations. Additional maintenance or inspections may be required by the issuance of AD applicable to the airframe, engine, propeller or components. This section also describes preventive maintenance that may be accomplished by certificated pilots as well as the manufacturer's recommended ground handling procedures. It includes considerations for hangering, tie-down, and general storage procedures for the aircraft. Section 9, the Supplements section, contains information necessary to safely and efficiently operate the aircraft when equipped with optional systems and equipment, not provided with the standard aircraft. Some of this information may be supplied by the aircraft manufacturer or by the manufacturer of the optional equipment. The appropriate information is inserted into the flight manual at the time the equipment is installed. Autopilots, navigation systems, and air conditioning systems are examples of equipment described in this section. Section 10, the Safety Tips section, is an optional section containing a review of information that enhances the safe operation of the aircraft. For example, physiological factors, general weather information, fuel conservation procedures, high altitude operations or cold weather operations might be discussed. Aircraft documents, certificate of aircraft registration. Before an aircraft can be flown legally, it must be registered with the FAA aircraft registry. The certificate of aircraft registration, which is issued to the owner as evidence of the registration, must be carried in the aircraft at all times. The Certificate of Aircraft Registration cannot be used for operations when the aircraft is registered under the laws of a foreign country. The aircraft's registration is cancelled upon written request of the certificate holder. The aircraft is totally destroyed or scrapped. The ownership of the aircraft is transferred. The certificate holder loses United States citizenship. An airworthiness certificate is issued by a representative of the FAA after the aircraft has been inspected, is found to meet the requirements of 14 CFR Part 21, and is in condition for safe operation. The airworthiness certificate must be displayed in the aircraft so it is legible to the passengers and crew whenever it is operated. The airworthiness certificate is transferred with the aircraft except when it is sold to a foreign purchaser. A standard airworthiness certificate remains in effect if the aircraft receives the required maintenance and is properly registered in the United States. A special airworthiness certificate is issued for all aircraft certificated in other than the standard classifications, such as experimental, restricted, limited, provisional, and LSA. LSA receive a pink special airworthiness certificate. There are exceptions. For example, the Piper Cub is in the new LSA category, but it was certificated as a normal aircraft during its manufacture. When purchasing an aircraft classified as other than standard, it is recommended that the local FISDO be contacted for an explanation of the pertinent airworthiness requirements and the limitations of such a certificate. Aircraft Inspections 14 CFR Part 91 places primary responsibility on the owner or operator for maintaining an aircraft in an airworthy condition. Certain inspections must be performed on the aircraft and the owner must maintain the airworthiness of the aircraft during the time between required inspections by having any defects corrected. Annual Inspection Any reciprocating engine or single engine turbojet turbopropeller powered small aircraft flown for business or pleasure and not flown for compensation or hire is required to be inspected at least annually. The inspection shall be performed by a certificated airframe and power plant mechanic who holds an inspection authorization by the manufacturer of the aircraft or by a certificated and appropriately rated repair station. The aircraft may not be operated unless the annual inspection has been performed within the preceding 12 calendar months. 
A period of 12 calendar months extends from any day of a month to the last day of the same month the following year. An aircraft overdue for an annual inspection may be operated under a special flight permit issued by the FAA for the purpose of flying the aircraft to a location where the annual inspection can be performed. However, all applicable ADs that are due must be complied with before the flight. 100-hour inspection. All aircraft under 12,500 pounds, except turbojet, turbopropeller-powered multi-engine airplanes and turbine-powered rotorcraft, used to carry passengers for hire, must have received a 100-hour inspection within the preceding 100 hours of time in service and have been approved for return to service. Additionally, an aircraft used for flight instruction for hire, when provided by the person giving the flight instruction, must also have received a 100-hour inspection. This inspection must be performed by an FAA-certificated A&P mechanic, an appropriately rated FAA-certificated repair station, or by the aircraft manufacturer. An annual inspection or an inspection for the issuance of an airworthiness certificate may be substituted for a required 100-hour inspection. The 100-hour inspection may be exceeded by not more than 10 hours while en route to reach a place where the inspection can be done. The excess time used to reach a place where the inspection can be done must be included in computing the next 100 hours of time and service. Transponder Inspection 14 CFR Section 91.413 requires that before a transponder can be used under 14 CFR Section 91.215A, it shall be tested and inspected within the preceding 24 months. Emergency Locator Transmitter An Emergency Locator Transmitter ELT is required by 14 CFR Section 91.207 and must be inspected within 12 calendar months after the last inspection for the following. Proper installation, battery corrosion, operation of the controls and crash sensor, the presence of a sufficient signal radiated from its antenna. Batteries used in the ELTs must be replaced or recharged if the batteries are rechargeable when the transmitter has been in use for more than one cumulative hour, when 50% of the battery useful life, or for rechargeable batteries, 50% of useful life of the charge has expired. An expiration date for replacing or recharging the battery must be legibly marked on the outside of the transmitter and entered in the aircraft maintenance record. Pre-flight inspections. The pre-flight inspection is a thorough and systematic means by which a pilot determines if the aircraft is airworthy and in condition for safe operation. POHs and owner information manuals contain a section devoted to a systematic method of performing a pre-flight inspection. Minimum Equipment Lists, MEL, and Operations with Inoperative Equipment. 14 CFR requires that all aircraft instruments and installed equipment be operative prior to each departure. When the FAA adopted the Minimum Equipment List, MEL, concept for 14 CFR Part 91 operations, this allowed operations with inoperative equipment determined to be non-essential for safe flight. At the same time, it allowed Part 91 operators without an MEL to defer repairs on non-essential equipment within the guidelines of Part 91. The FAA has two acceptable methods of deferring maintenance on small rotorcraft, non-turbine powered airplanes, gliders, or lighter than air aircraft operated under Part 91. They are the deferral provision of 14 CFR Section 91.213D and an FAA approved MEL. The deferral provision of 14 CFR section 91.213D is widely used by most pilot operators. Its popularity is due to simplicity and minimal paperwork. When inoperative equipment is found during pre-flight or prior to departure, the decision should be made to cancel the flight, obtain maintenance prior to flight, or to defer the item or equipment.
Maintenance deferrals are not used for in-flight discrepancies. The manufacturer's AFM POH procedures are to be used in those situations. The discussion that follows assumes that the pilot wishes to defer maintenance that would ordinarily be required prior to flight. Using the deferral provision of 14 CFR Section 91.213D, the pilot determines whether the inoperative equipment is required by type design, 14 CFR, or ADs. If the inoperative item is not required and the aircraft can safely be operated without it, the deferral may be made. The inoperative item shall be deactivated or removed and an inoperative placard placed near the appropriate switch, control, or indicator. If deactivation or removal involves maintenance, removal always will, it must be accomplished by certificated maintenance personnel and recorded in accordance with 14 CFR Part 43. Preventive Maintenance Preventive maintenance is considered to be simple or minor preservation operations and the replacement of small standard parts not involving complex assembly operations. Allowed items of preventive maintenance are listed and limited to the items of 14 CFR Part 43, Appendix A, C. Maintenance Entries All pilots who maintain or perform preventive maintenance must make an entry in the maintenance record of the aircraft. The entry must include 1. A description of the work 2. The date of completion of the work performed 3. The entry of the pilot's name, signature, certificate number, and type of certificate held. The following examples of preventive maintenance are taken from 14 CFR Part 43, which should be consulted for a more in-depth look at preventive maintenance a pilot can perform on an aircraft. Remember, preventive maintenance is limited to work that does not involve complex assembly operations and includes removal, installation, and repair of landing gear tires and shock cords, servicing landing gear shock struts by adding oil, air, or both, servicing gear wheel bearings, replacing defective safety wiring or cotter keys, replenishing hydraulic fluid in the hydraulic reservoir, and more. Certificated pilots, excluding student pilots, sport pilots, and recreational pilots, may perform preventive maintenance on any aircraft that is owned or operated by them, provided that aircraft is not used in air carrier service or 14 CFR Part 121, 129, or 135. Repairs and Alterations Repairs and alterations are classified as either major or minor. 14 CFR Part 43, Appendix A, describes the alterations and repairs considered major. Major repairs or alterations shall be approved for return to service on FAA Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration, by an appropriately rated certificated repair station and FAA certificated A&P mechanic holding an IA or a representative of the administrator. Minor repairs and minor alterations may be approved for return to service with a proper entry in the maintenance records by an FAA certificated A&P mechanic or an appropriately certificated repair station. Airworthiness Directives, ADs. A primary safety function of the FAA is to require correction of unsafe conditions found in an aircraft aircraft engine, propeller, or appliance when such conditions exist and are likely to exist or develop in other products of the same design. The unsafe condition may exist because of a design defect, maintenance, or other causes. 14 CFR Part 39 and Airworthiness Directives, ADs, define the authority and responsibility of the administrator for requiring the necessary corrective action. ADs are used to notify aircraft owners and other interested persons of unsafe conditions and to specify the conditions under which the product may continue to be operated. ADs are divided into two categories, those of an emergency nature requiring immediate compliance prior to further flight and those of a less urgent nature requiring compliance within a specified period of time. ADs are regulatory 
and shall be complied with unless a specific exemption is granted. It is the responsibility of the aircraft owner or operator to ensure compliance with all pertinent ADs, including those ADs that require recurrent or continuing action. Aircraft Owner Operator Responsibilities The registered owner operator of an aircraft is responsible for having a current airworthiness certificate and a certificate of aircraft registration in the aircraft, maintaining the aircraft in an airworthy condition, including compliance with all applicable ADs, and assuring that maintenance is properly recorded keeping abreast of current regulations concerning the operation and maintenance of the aircraft, notifying the FAA aircraft registry immediately of any change of permanent mailing address or of the sale or export of the aircraft or of the loss of the eligibility to register an aircraft. Knowledge of an aircraft's AFM, POH, and documents such as ADs help a pilot to have ready access to pertinent information needed to safely fly a particular aircraft. By understanding the operations, limitations, and performance characteristics of the aircraft, the pilot can make good flight decisions. By learning what preventive maintenance is allowed on the aircraft, a pilot can maintain his or her aircraft in an airworthy condition. The goal of every pilot is a safe flight. Flight manuals and aircraft documentation are essential tools used to reach that goal. This concludes your introduction to aircraft manuals and documents. We hope you learned a lot. Please help us spread the word about Pilot Training System, and we look forward to further servicing your flight training needs.